you want to move the needle in your business, you're going to need relevant SEO tactics that actually work. We're not going to tell you the right now things to do. We're going to tell you the right things to do. Listen in. Hello, everyone. I'm here today with Alex Membrio, and Alex is the CEO of Cardinal, a digital marketing agency focused on growing multi-location companies. He has been featured in leading national publications, including the Business Journal, Entrepreneur, Search Engine Journal, and the Wall Street Journal. And today, we are going to talk about link building strategies anyone can do. Alex, how are you doing today? I'm good, David. Thanks for having me on. This is going to be fun. Yeah, it is going to be fun. And, you know, I, I, you know, I think we're also here to kind of set the record straight. There's lots of um, competing thoughts and stuff. And, and, you know, there's always the, the new shiny, you know, objects and deals that everybody likes to chase around. And then they forget that the foundation, the foundational stuff is still important mm -hmm. just because other things and other factors have come into play with ranking and everything. And I think they're really good changes, actually. But still... Um, I think sometimes that confuses people. So on that note, I'd like to just get your take on um, the importance of actual link building for ranking. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. And it always has been huge. If you think about it, when what made Google so popular and famous was that they determined, they figured out a way to tell the difference between one site with similar content to the other. So if we are going to index the world's information in every website, and this is what AltaVista and Yahoo were trying to do, how do I prioritize one or the other? What do I know to show to a searcher, right? And so they came out with the PageRank algorithm, which was all about determining the quality of the inbound links coming to one website. With that algorithm, Google then determined this website has similar content to this one, but this one has a lot more backlinks. We're going to make sure this one shows up higher in search engine. That foundational algorithm has not changed a ton over the last 15 years or so since we started doing SEO. Gosh, I was in high school in the last 10 years of owning Cardinal. Backlinks have always been at least 50% of the algorithm. That part has not changed. So All right. it's always awesome. been popular. But yeah, very cool. Yeah, because I, I, yeah, like I said, there's, I think, what, five years ago, six years ago, it was almost everything, right? It, it was almost everything. And then... Yep. People gamed it and they started link stuffing, uh, building link farms um, and all these things to game this system. And mm -hmm. Google's pretty smart. And they, they're smart. They're, it out. they're smart and they figure it out. And then they blacklist those sites and then we play the game again. <laughs> right. And then, and, then, and then they figure it out from there. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, I, again, I, we, we're here to talk about link building and... I think we have established that it's still important. So now, you know, the other 50% of the equation, we'll talk about that very briefly. Uh, but for right now, talking about building links. Yeah. So we're about to get going with that. And actually, let me backtrack here and, and do just touch on this real quick. There are other ranking factors such as time on site, how many pages people are visiting, the relevancy of the anchor text to the, you know, the... Well, that's link building, I guess. Right. But other factors such as time on site, how many pages people visit, right. engagement, social metrics, stuff like that. And Alex wrote a great post. And if you just Google Cardinal Digital Marketing, 12 local search trends you can no longer ignore in 2019, we'll have the other 50%. And, and I do encourage everybody to read that because we're talking about half the equation, but we still have the other half. So check that out. But today we're focusing on link building. Mm -hmm. So... But before we get into some of your awesome techniques that, you know, anybody can do, um, where would one start? Because before you start going and, you know, feverishly looking to build links and do some of these yeah. awesome techniques that you have, um, you need to have a focus, I would assume, right? Yeah. And you need to have a focus of what you want to go after. So what should, what should one do before, you know, yeah. if they deem SEO and organic ranking something that's going to drive business for them? And you got to do that first. Let me, let me point that out too as an overall marketing equation. Not everybody gets business from SEO and or it might be too long of a game. Like if you're looking for cars for sale, do something different. <laughs> and Alex might tell you right now, it's going to take right. you gobs of time. So, um, but for the ones that you do deem, you know, you do see SEO as an opportunity. Where does right. one start, Alex? Yeah, good question. So when you found out that SEO can drive business and you're willing to wait it out whatever time span an SEO consultant is telling you it's going to take to start ranking, you want to really start doing the simple stuff like seeing what your customer would type in at Google to find you. Oftentimes, our clients get that part wrong. 
and you've got uh, medical providers. We have a lot of healthcare clients that are uh, showing up for either competitor names or insurances they show up for. And it makes sense to show up for an insurance uh, that you that you um, that you provide for. However, that's not what your patients are typically looking for. They're looking for a specific type of doctor, and then they'll see if you do take their insurance. And you're going to waste a whole ton of money trying to rank for organically for the wrong thing. So, go to Google, use their keyword tool. You all use all the keyword research tools that they have, and that you'll have at your disposal. Find out what people are searching for, and you want to not only go after the biggest volume keywords, but you want to go after all of the long tail, smaller keywords because they're going to be less competitive and create pages for every one of those keywords that you want to target. And you'll rank for those and drive new customers for those longer tail phrases much sooner than the big keywords with lots of shiny search volume. So always start there with creating the right content. And how do you make decisions on that? You know, in the past when we're looking, you know, and we run, you know, you have the Google tools and you have some paid tools, you know, the yeah. SEM rushes, the Ahrefs of the world. Yep. And stuff where you do get, and when you do run these reports and normally you run them against your top competitors in your space and, and then your own website. So you can see what people are actually searching for mm -hmm. to do that. So what you normally get is a report that gives you the volume, you know, 50 searches, a thousand searches, a hundred thousand searches, whatever it might be. Then they also give you a competitive index, like basically how hard it will be to rank, which goes from, I guess, one to 99. Yeah. So where do you make your decision on volume in competition? Because you've got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to focus and get the ones you want, although there will be an umbrella yeah. effect, I guess, um, you know, site wide yeah. that would help. But how do you make that decision? I, I really look at what the highest margin parts of my business and then I focus on those keywords. So you'll have a bunch of various service lines at your own company and you're going to have lots of search volume for the various ones. So when it's kind of up in the air and you see something with lots of search volume and it's going to be really intense to compete in that space, what drives your margins? What's going to have the biggest impact on your business down the road? What warrants a three-year SEO investment into ranking for that keyword? That's hmm. where I start. And then I look at competitors and my competitors that have the closest alignment with services, offerings, and, and customers. And I see what they have ranked for. Uh, and then I start looking at the competition and the competition, I'm not afraid of the competition ever on a keyword. It's just time. How long is it going to take? And so if something's going to take three years, make sure it's high margin and really important to your business. That's a great point. You know, that's a really, really good point. And you, because you sometimes get caught up in the numbers too much and um, you need to take a step back and say, okay, before we even look at this or as we look at this or before we look at the competition and the volume and everything, what's literally going to drive us business, the most, yeah. the best business, the highest yeah. margin business. Correct. Because SEO is gold, but it takes some gold <laughs> coins to get there. Takes so uh, you might as well rank for what's actually going to drive you business. A lot of times people want to rank a blog. No. Mm -hmm. You want to no. rank service pages. You want to rank your home site and you want to rank correct. service pages and you want to do that. So, correct. okay, awesome. All right, so everybody, you see kind of where to start. And I understand you might not understand what these keyword tools are and everything like that, but anybody um, who knows anything about SEO will know all about that. Mm -hmm. So just understand that there's these keyword reports, but take Alex's advice and use your brain, you use what you know about your company and what's going to drive you business and start there. Okay. Awesome. Now we've identified that. And now we want to, we want to fricking rank. We want to, we want people to search and find us right. and start using, you know, our services. Talk to us, tell us about some of your, you know, your top six, seven ways of um, building links that people can get started on right away. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to, before I even jump into link building, uh, if you read anything out there that says link building is dead, it's obviously not. It's still how we tell one website to another, which one's going to be more powerful. And then everything we talk about in this, I want to remind everybody that's listening and watching, I don't do a ton of the manual stuff myself. They are great contractors on upwork.com, upwork.com that can do a lot of these things for you. So anybody that's listening, I want you to take the high level understanding of these things. And then I want you to go find the individuals that are going to execute this because I think it's a lot of business owners listening to this. And what you're going to have is you're going to have a lot of business owners and they're going to bottleneck things. So you're going to have marketing directors that are going to bottleneck things with approvals on content and outreach uh, methods and things like that. 
So guys, use a team of really specialized contractors or go to your SEO company and ask them about these specific tactics. Uh, so I want to start by saying that because if we get pretty technical here, don't feel inundated. Look for, look for the people that know how to do these things and they can help advise you. So let's say you're already creating really great content on your website, right? And you have great blog articles and you should not really care too much about ranking for those blog articles. But what they should do is generate inbound links into the blog articles and those links pass the rank juice, the link juice, if you want to call it that, from your blog articles to your service pages that are what you really end up wanting to rank. And David now, said that perfectly. Well, if I, you don't mind, let me jump in there so we can get some clarity on that. When you said the, the links to the blog article rank your service pages, but that's only if you are intralinking from the blog article to your service page, right? Yep, that's a really important. So and before you post any blog article, either you go through or an SEO consultant needs to go through it and link to your service pages with uh, various anchor texts, like mix it up, but you need a link to service pages. Oh, like every time, right? Uh, like, that's the whole point of them. That's yeah, the whole don't point. Create, in fact, I, I do. don't, don't create blogs unless this stuff is linking in and, the, and, and that it's creating inbound links. Like you're not going to get business from someone finding your educational article on what you do. And, and that's a misperception a lot of content. Now, it helps you develop audiences online where people, you know, virtually are raising their hand saying, yeah, I read that. I am and I'm interested. And then you just keep retargeting to them. But those aren't going to drive your business. It's going to build the yeah. awareness. And then you come with a special break from offer. And on the SEO yeah. side, I don't know. I mean, you learn more than you forget more than you learn than you know, right? And sometimes in going through all, there's so many details, but I got reminded of that by Andy Crescidini the other day, reading something or watching something of his. And I'm like, yes, that's right. Like we need to like, oh, not overdo it, but like do it a hundred percent of the time. Every blog we put out, every yeah. single blog, we need to point a link or two or three to various service pages on our own site, intro Correct. link. So on to your service page from your Correct. blog on your site. All right, cool. That helps a lot. Go for it. Yeah, and that helps tremendously. You also want to link link to at least uh, three like authority figure websites in your industry because Google will see that you're also linking out to really popular websites, and they'll say, "Okay, this place, this article might be authoritative because they're linking out to other authorities." So make sure you link to yourself. Make sure you link to three other authorities, and usually six to twelve. Yeah, you can have six links per thousand words. Usually will work. Um, so anyway, so you've created this wonderful blog article. I recommend two thousand plus words. It's what is showing is ranking really well. At least fifteen hundred per blog article. And then what you want to do is drive links to it. And so you can hire someone to do this or you can do it yourself. You'll create an email campaign that goes out to all of the bloggers in your industry, website, uh, webmasters and things like that, that are already writing and have compiled lists about whatever you're writing about. And you'll email them and then you'll say, hey, Jim or hey, Sally, uh, I've got this great article on, let's say you mentioned our search trends or SEO guide. And I have someone doing this currently, and we've got this great SEO guide. You mentioned these other two in your article. Would you also mind linking to ours? Because we feel like it could add value to your readers. That's called the skyscraper technique. Webmasters are totally open to it right now because it's adding value to their leaders, to their readers, because it's adding another uh, valuable blog article. And then what you'll do is uh, you'll go on social media. It's a bit of a trade-off, and you'll, um, you'll promote their blog on your social media. You will not link from your blog article to their website, because then that becomes a reciprocal link, which kind of hurts your, hurts the value of it a little bit. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let me, let me ask you about that. So if somebody is contributing a blog to your site, mm -hmm. um, it's not good to ask them for a backlink in return from a domain that they have access to. Yes. So you want to get the backlink from them, but you don't want to put the link from you to them referencing your article because then it's just a reciprocal link, right? And so you're going to do your outreach. We've created a great SEO guide, right? Now I'm going out to all the SEO webmasters out there and they are linking to my SEO guide in their list of great guides, right? Mm -hmm. And what they ask for in return is, would you mind just promoting us on social media? Okay. Say, yes, great SEO master. We're going to promote you on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. So we do that, but don't link to them. Don't link to them linking to you. Basically. Okay. But whenever that goes up, don't link back to them. That, that becomes a reciprocal link. But the main takeaway I would say is you need to create blog articles, but then it shouldn't stop there. If your article is great, you need to be doing outreach to other people in your industry to get them to link into your blog article. So creating the article is really just step one. It's got to be promoted. Now, what about finding the right people to link to? I mean, once you establish some authority, like 
for us to, you know, for us specifically, I guess I can speak most personally here is like every single day I'm getting some, you know, at least one or two people now asking to contribute to our blog. Yeah. And so I've used that as my opportunity for my link building now because it's, it's Mm. become organic. People keep coming to me and coming to me and coming. And I said, sure, you can contribute as long as, you know, we can, you know, do some sort of exchange or whatever, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm just doing now. Be at the, we were doing that and I was paying somebody to do that, but now it's like, I don't need more than five or 10 new links a month, potentially uh-huh. be where I want to go. So now I just let it happen organically. Yeah. Um, but let's just say you haven't built that authority and people aren't reaching out to you. And, and, and let me just say that only was because we kept producing great content consistently. Like yeah. it, it didn't happen in year one. I mean, it kind of barely did, but now yeah. it's every day, literally. So um, what it was, what would one do to get started? Where would they yeah, go to absolutely. find the right people? Yeah. If you're looking to find the right people. So once again, I go to Upwork and I hire list builders. There's uh, people in uh, uh, Pakistan and India and Serbia, my, the Eastern Euro block. That's my favorite. I go to Serbia all the time for list builders and researchers. And I have them find the list of everybody in my industry and the website URL and their email. And then you pump those emails into some kind of email outreach software. There's cold, cold mail, um, quick mail, tons of these things. HubSpot, you could do it. I don't recommend it, but MailChimp if you had to. And then you'll create an email cadence that says, it's pretty templated and says, hey, whatever first name, uh, we've created this great guide. Would you mind linking back to it? So basically you build the list through researchers on Upwork and then you do the email campaign through whatever email um, email platform you want to use. And then you get responses back. They're like, okay, we'll link back to you. Just promote us on social media. You do that you get the link helps your uh, authority. Awesome. All right. Well, cool. That's yeah. sounds easy enough. There's some elbow grease in that and some organization, but once you get it rolling, yep, you know. all of it, there's elbow grease in all of these. Like there is no easy way to do link building and there is no cheap way. Yeah. There's no cheap way to do it. Awesome. What else you got for us? Yeah, absolutely. So something that's not being tapped into a ton, uh, but works really well is um, any kind of um, code networking or co-marketing event you can do. And podcasts are really great for that because you can scale them an hour interview and you can do one a day. And generally what happens is podcasts like this one or the one that I host, we end up transcribing and we link back to wherever that person works, right? And so you're getting on the podcast and that's getting transcribed onto the podcast website. And websites like yours uh, are incredibly powerful. You're in a similar industry to me. So getting a link back from that signals to Google, an authority like you, David is talking to me. Wow, Alex must know what he's talking about too. And so these links are incredibly valuable and not a lot of people are doing it yet. So hiring a book, podcast booking company or just doing the outreach yourself to try to get on these podcasts is huge for backlinks uh, and has really helped our authority as well. So I recommend that tactic. That, that tactic's working better than most right now. And a lot of people don't know about it. So I was like a little. Well, it takes a lot of effort and you got to have true authority. It's just a lot of people are scared to get on video. Yeah. Um, And it's probably because they're just, you know, I don't know. They want to do it. Right. Their hair doesn't look good. Right. Right. You know, but you got to take the effort and you got to have the authority and you got to have good stuff coming out of your mouth. We've got Rob editing this one. So we're, we're going to look good. Yes. Yes. Little (laughs) Rob Hicks shout out our podcast. (laughs) Robert Hicks. H I X. There you go. Robert. Right. They don't confuse him he, for us he, people. He's downtown. holding up a sign spelling his name for us right now. No, <laughs> and no, his okay. LinkedIn handle. That's weird. Okay. I can spell Hicks. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, yeah, no, absolutely. But you got to make the effort and you got to go and you got to have something cool to talk about. Yeah. And it needs to be applicable. You know, I, I'm very picky about who I have on our podcast because I only want to share good information. So the people who come on it, uh, they all know their stuff. But you know your yeah. stuff because you know, <laughs> you mm-hmm. study up and you're good at it. Yep. So you got to have that. That's table stakes. But if you got it, um, share it yeah. on other people's blogs. You and know it's really, really, it's real, and it's really fun. It's like an ego boost for you when you're doing it you get to have fun. And then you don't only are getting the links and you're getting the visibility, but on LinkedIn, you're promoting it. And that helps drum up new leads from your network. Activating your network on LinkedIn is huge. And these podcast interviews are tremendous for that. You're not only getting backlinks, but I'm getting to promote it on LinkedIn. My network sees it. They say, David's smart. Alex is smart. Well, hopefully mm-hmm. you know, and I'll say hosting a podcast. Now it's a bigger step, but yeah. you know, everything Alex said, I get the benefit of all of that as well. Alex gets all the benefit of, of it as well. Cause people normally will link back to you or share it out. And all that mm-hmm. good stuff. 
Okay, awesome. Well, let's keep rolling along. Yeah, absolutely. So um, something else that uh, works really well, and I don't see a lot of people doing yet, maybe after this podcast, everybody will be doing it. But if you want to help your local community while, all, while also serving yourself, um, associations and charities, nonprofits, they have really powerful websites because they get, they get linked to from their corporate sponsors. And so, and they have tons of fresh content. They're helping the community. So you have all these local .govs and really important websites linking to the nonprofit. And so I came up with this like two years ago. I said, I'm going to reach out to all the nonprofits in Atlanta and see if I can become a sponsor and get a backlink from their sponsor page with the anchor text of my choosing. Uh, and so we did that and um, we sponsor probably 50, 60 associations around uh, the Southeast. And it's primary, I mean, it's great to feel good thing to help these nonprofits, but for about 250 bucks a year, each one of them will link back to us with uh, the anchor text of my choosing. Sometimes I even get homepage links. Sometimes I get shout outs in their email newsletter and LinkedIn and stuff like that. So there's a good bit of outreach. You need to do the outreach yourself. Uh, but if you go into Google and you type in a uh, nonprofit plus sponsor, nonprofit and sponsor, you'll get all the sponsor pages. You click on them, you see who the person running sponsorship is, is, and then you reach out to them and ask them what it would cost to be a sponsor on their association sponsor page. Now, how do you make sure you get what you want outside of the altruistic nature of sponsoring them? Yeah, absolutely. So how do I make sure I get the backlink, right? Um, so in my email to them, I ask how much to sponsor them before anything, any money is transferred. I say, Hey, listen, this is an example of another association that linked to us um is this going to be feasible on your website and uh usually it's a yes it's no problem you know nonprofits need the help so they're happy to do it um i will not email websites that don't already link to their sponsors i recommend you do not as well uh because they're not doing it because they have an seo in there that is telling them not to link out to spread their juice out so i won't I will buy that. So you those. do, you check that out first. Gotcha. I'll check that out. You've got to be linking. Cause I thought say you could get yourself in a very uncomfortable position, yeah. you know, if, <laughs> if you I, don't know that. So check that out. So basically just go and see their sponsor pages and are there literal blue little lines that are yeah. linking back to you yeah. or yeah. linking back to people. And if that's the case, go for it. If it's not, Sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, we put up philanthropy big time, you know, big, but this is more of a business decision here. Yeah. So it's okay. Let's Don't go. feel bad. Do it for the backlink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a great idea. Um, easy one. Um, mm -hmm. How many would you recommend? L let's kind of put this in context because you just mentioned 50 to 60. You threw out a number like 250. And if my math serves me correctly, that's about a $15,000 a year investment. Um, that's about what a lot of people would pay for SEO on a entry level yep. program, period, right? So um, where would you gauge if you're excise business? I know this is an impossibly hard question I'm throwing at you. This is a huge curveball. But um, what, about how many of those would be needle moving? If somebody said, okay, we're going to take $2,500 this year and we're going to mm -hmm. sponsor 10 like a what size company would that even matter for? Or is that even worth it? Yeah, five, $10 million plus company. If I was sub 5 million, I'd probably be focusing on blog content and getting links from outreach and other bloggers and things like that. And the next point we'll talk about of doing PR for the sake of getting inbound links, I would probably start there. They're more cost-effective options. In our industry, that's incredibly competitive. I'm an SEO company competing against SEO companies. Uh, we have to outspend. So we'll spend 15K a month on link building. Um, and that's, you know, that's what it takes to win in our industry. Okay. Uh, but for someone starting out smaller, create really great, great content and get people linking back to it by doing the, the original request. I would which start is there and with the next point that we'll make here in a second. Yeah. And your costs are way lower if you are doing the writing, of course, but you might, you know, every, everything is scale. Everything, you know, everything's correct. correct. All right. Well, cool. Yep. And uh, the next point I'd mention, something that's uh, more cost effective for your smaller sub $5 million businesses, especially if you have a marketing manager in place, even the CEO can do this. But if you go to HeyRo, help a reporter out is how it's spelled out. That's the acronym, help a reporter out. Um, reporters, journalists will send out um, queries every day, two or three times a day. And it's like someone for the Wall Street Journal and they send something out that's a sentence that says, hey, listen, we're, or hey, look, we're, we're looking for um, small business marketing experts. Uh, you have to uh, submit an answer to this specific question in the next 12 hours, right? 
I have someone that works, uh, spent about one grand a month on this. And I have someone that answers like four or five questions a day. And uh, they'll answer these PR queries from various publications. And then like one out of five will get featured in a big publication. And they are usually big publications. Wall Street Journal, I was in in 2009, and it came from one of these. Uh, every month we get four or five from high ranking authority blogs. Uh, and it's from answering these uh, reporter questions. Um, so and, and that and that's super valuable. You get a, a, a legit link back from Wall yeah. Street Journal. When I say legit, um, press releases, pickups don't give you anything. But no. if you actually get the, like a real article like that, that's I don't know to put a price tag on it. But I, you know, seeing what people charge you, I mean, your multi multi thousand dollars is what that would cost. Multi you multi thousand dollars. You're absolutely right, David. If you were to go buy that link, and you can buy some of these links on like Forbes and stuff, and Google's figuring that out. But it's about two three grand, and we got a uh, Harvard Business Review HBR link to us a few months ago, and like you can see your rankings jump. Like that's the, I mean, the, yeah, one week on. later uh, from an SEO for an SEO or here. I mean, that is like your Christmas, yeah. right? You actually can see like a, a, a specific thing actually do, you know, a needle moving, like one yeah. thing bumps it. You're just like head over heels. Tell it me. It was it. awesome. And then you yeah. can use that in sales pitches too. Like, Hey, I'm a feature like you, when, uh, we intro, when you gave my intro, like a lot of those, uh, publications, they came from this technique. And then I get to say that I've been featured in the wall street journal um, on, Harvard Business Review and all these things. And it's like, I was up one night, like answering questions, you know, yeah. like, not, I'm not that special, but. But, but you got worked. one, then you got the next and then you got the next. Right. I mean, pe people are sheep and, you know, we have what the croc brain and the other one. And it, we like to be lazy and we like to let our systems work for us. And right. if they see other authority things, nah, I don't want to do my research. He knows what he's talking about. Right. <laughs> to me, that's, that's human nature. So you got to get that one win, but go for it. Yeah. yeah you got to get that one. First one. It'll take some time. All right. Well, cool, man. These are some great tips. And, and, and I love what I love that you're giving is you're giving the full breadth uh, for people who have to use elbow grease. And I promise you, Elon Musk had to use elbow grease before he became yeah. Elon Musk. So everybody yeah. needs to start somewhere and it's just the natural evolution of where you are in your company, but you're giving us both ends of the spectrum. So that's awesome. Thank you for that. Wow. So um, go ahead. Any, anything else, any other, um, any other activities? Uh, I would say just be careful about the links that you're acquiring. Don't do too many too quickly. Uh, and then as you ramp up, like just make sure you're doing a steady uphill up into the right stream. If you inundate your backlink portfolio too quickly, um, EDU links were really good back in the day. They can work like getting college links if they are relevant colleges or high school around you. But like careful ramping up too many of these things. And if you're getting advice from an SEO consultant or contractor on different link building techniques to use, make sure you trust them. A lot will kind of put you into automated schemes and you don't want any of that. So don't cheap out on your SEO director, even if that's a part time person from Upwork. Make sure that person is $100 an hour. But then the people doing the outreach and things like that don't need to be. But make sure your, your strategy is coming from someone that knows what they're talking about. Okay, that's awesome. Now, you did touch on something that I remember reading about something you wrote where, where uh, an opportunity was doing scholarships and getting those links from EDUs. Yep. Um, can you share a story of how that works? Because mm -hmm. some people might, because a lot of times people want to do, you know, benefit from doing the right, you know, cool thing. Yep. For the world yeah. so this is and there's nothing wrong with benefiting from doing good things mm -hmm. so you can work at that so how how would one go about doing that getting what you want yep. and offering enough that it makes value that is enough for them to be like yes sure i'll be involved because of the x amount of the scholarship Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So we create a scholarship, the Cardinal Digital Marketing Scholarship. Of course, we had keywords in there and it benefits. I care about entrepreneurs and helping entrepreneurs out there. So twice a year, we award a $500 scholarship. And um, our job is to reach out to relevant universities that uh, provide valuable scholarships and make sure they know about it and they link back to us. Google had, did catch on to this a few years ago and it's like paying for um, they feel like it can be like paying for a link because you're providing a scholarship. I don't feel that way. So I provided it to only the relevant universities. I would feel good about helping not any sketchy ones or online things that are like based in Mumbai or anything like that, but I want to help entrepreneurs and I don't think it's sketchy. So, um, but how, how does that work? Is it, um, like you say, you do universe scholarship for the university of Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Is it just that one link? 
to you then, right? Correct. From their scholarship listing page. Yep. And you have to, once again, it's like the, uh, like the techniques we were talking about before the skyscraper technique, you had to build a list of the universities you want to target, and then you got to find the emails of the people running the scholarship or the webmasters. Okay. Awesome. Well, man, those are some awesome, awesome tips. And again, you, you've covered what people can, you know, do by get accomplished by doing it themselves. Uh, you've heard some bigger plays. Um, if you have some, you know, larger spins to do, um, obviously there's going to be some cost associated period, but again, it's all relative. And really, if you're making money from SEO, well, then you're not really spending anything. Um, what to close up here, a couple of last questions is any quick tools um, that you'd like to recommend for mm. people on, you know, in any part of this equation? I really like Moz. Uh, they really improved. Um, they really improved their uh, link algorithm and the way they're able to discover links out there. And their discovered and lost backlink checker is really huge for me. I get to see what new links my competitors are acquiring and I can see, I can catch on to anything new that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, like six months ago, I noticed one of my competitors was leaving testimonials for vendors and, uh, and they were getting a backlink from the website because they would leave little testimonials that very powerful websites um, would link back to them saying. Uh, and so I would follow, I followed that technique and started doing it for Cardinal. And that's another tip that uh, your listeners can use. If you have some great vendors. That's an partners, easy one. That's an easy that's one. That's a free one, everybody. If your vendor says no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time for new vendor. I'll reach out to the CEOs of the vendors and I'll say, hey man, I love the, your service. Can I leave you a testimonial? Would you link back to our website? And uh, nine times out of 10, you get a yes. So anywho, Moz works really well. SEMrush is good for competitor analysis um, as well. And we use Ahrefs and OnCrawl and all that stuff. But basically, if you're a beginner and just need to look at backlinks, Moz is a good start. Okay, awesome. Um, you know, we, we've touched on this a little bit, very vaguely, and you're going to probably have a vague answer here because there's no <laughs> really one way to answer this question. But again, expectations. We got it. We got to set some sort of expectations. You know, you can potentially rank. You can, you definitely can see movement potentially in two to three months. Sometimes, yeah. uh, sometimes you won't. Sometimes you can hit some of your goals in six months. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes it's going to take 12, 18, 24, 36 months to get where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Um, any benchmark, any, anything that you can add to help, mm -hmm. you know, set the record straight on that, you know, yep. as far as what expect, what people can expect. Yeah. If you're not driving good, uh, good volume of organic leads in six months after you've started, then something's not quite right. Like even if you're starting from scratch in a semi-competitive market, like your SEO company could have been targeting longer tail phrases and started trip, you know, trickling in leads and authority. So it's tough for me to find like our clients within four months know whether Cardinal's a good fit and when we know whether we're going to see movement. You see movement. You see now, movement might not three. be top five. You see, but. you mean you see movement in three and you have leads coming in in six. And when we say movement, we, you know, they're going to SEO company should show you, okay, you were ranking 80. We've identified this. Now you're at 54. Now, yep. you know, you're at 32. You're not going to get anything from that. I'll tell you right now, but you're heading in the right direction and 11, you're not going to get in 10, you're nope. gonna get, but you know, nine first page, you know, six, five, four, three, two, one, you start to start to rank. So you do keep an eye on all that. So that's, you know, basically seeing movement. And then you're, what you're saying is they should start to drip in some leads because every strategy should have picked out some of those 10 mm -hmm. to 20 search volume terms that you can knock out of the park. Uh, it's a crowded space, but there's a lot of, businesses in a lot of specific areas of the world that right. aren't dominated. Right. Correct. Well, very cool. Well, um, any parting thoughts or any, uh, any predictions for us and the change of the mm -hmm. landscape in the last nope. SEO year? works and will work for a long time. I was scared myself like six years ago. I invested a big, uh, a huge amount into a paid media team. We got a great paid media department now because I was nervous about SEO when they added the fourth paid search listing. I was like, Holy shit. <laughs> See you later SEO. Uh, but at the end of the day, people want, uh, transparencies from Google. So SEO will be a long around for a long time. If you haven't started investing in it, it's not too late. Start. It's going to be around for a long time. It'll morph into something else in 10 years, but, uh, it works wonders. It's made multi-million dollar businesses out of uh, a lot of clients that started with us from scratch. So it works. 
Awesome. Well, um, how can people continue to learn from you, Alex? And again, everybody don't forget about uh, his other article we mentioned earlier. Yeah, just type in Atlanta Digital Marketing Agency or Atlanta SEO Company. If you can't find us, if we're not number <laughs> one or two, then we don't deserve to be found. So. That's a perfect closing from an SEO expert. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alex, for your time today. And uh, until next time. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for listening to the latest podcast. Feel free to go to magnificent.com forward slash blog to see the show notes for this interview, as well as those from many other of the world's top marketing experts.